Well, I'm screwing around in the mountains a little bit here, and I am hopeful to get back in time for at least two of the three scheduled hours of class tonight. And I've got Cameron going there to cover the first hour. And uh, I need to talk to Abraham about covering the first hour on Skype. So, uh, that's the sort of logistical stuff. I don't know why I started with that. It's dull. But this is a philosophy talk video, which means basically, as I'm doing a philosophy talk video, I say to myself, you don't have to be thematically consistent, and it doesn't necessarily have to be of any particular great interest. Although, with all of my videos, they're, if it's too dull and does absolutely nothing, then I tend not to put it up. And I have quite a few videos that just never make it up on the internet. Now, hearing this, some of you might think, but golly, Eric, you put up so many dull videos, how dull must those ones you don't put up be? Well, the answer to that is more dull than the ones I do put up. Uh, I'm in an interesting part of the mountains right now on the 18th, in this big valley, and there's ski slopes over there, and some quaint houses and stuff, but instead of seeing any of that, you're seeing my face. So let me show you out the window a little bit. Okay, while you're looking out the window, and enjoying the view, I will continue telling you about what's going on in my life. So, I went to visit with Alvarino today and record him playing some music, and we got quite a few tracks down, which was good. And, uh, I've got things in the mix with Tender as well that I mentioned in an earlier Tender update that are things that I'm thinking about. <laughs> And I've got to register my own kids today. I've got to prep out cab for that tournament tomorrow. No problem. And what else do I have to do? I have to... Oh, you know, a bunch of shit. Random stuff. So, while we're having a philosophy talk video, let's actually talk a little philosophy here. Concept one. The purpose of philosophy. What it is. Why it exists. Why we engage in it. This is often a place where people begin uh, to address the issue of philosophy. And I think uh, the better answer to what is philosophy or why does it exist or what does it do or something is it's what we do with aspects of being alive that defy understanding through other means. A philosophy is what we do to understand aspects of our lives that defy understanding by other means. And the reason I like this particular definition is It sums up the, the domain in which philosophy exists. It exists in a domain where other modalities of understanding are inadequate. In a closed system modality, you can check against the standard and see if, if you're, you can see if you understand how to do something um, by seeing if you got the right answer. It's like if if somebody 
writes a few sentences in French and I'm able to translate it and the words I translate it into are more or less the same idea of the same words as the uh, words of multiple other people who translate it or Google Translate or something like that uh, then I can determine that I have in fact learned enough French to be able to translate those two sentences and if in fact I will I make this similar discovery frequently over the course of many many sentences then at that point can I conclude that I have successfully learned to speak French <sighs> so that would be an example of understanding that has a satisfactory completion aspect to it, right? But there are things in our lives that do not have a satisfactorily complete answer in that fashion. For example, what happens after you die? Well, nobody knows. Why does nobody know the answer to that? Well, because nobody has yet survived death. Thus, there's nobody who can tell us. And since nobody's had the experience, nobody knows themselves. So, we don't really know. Now, some people will definitely say, make the claim that, well, we do know. We, you know, it, it's just wishful thinking that there might be something other than nothing, right? That's certainly a possible explanation, possible approach to it. But, I don't find that satisfactory because how could they know? They've never died before. Why would they know? Why would they know any more than me? I don't know what happens. I know that from another person's perspective, from a family member's perspective, you're gone, right? You don't get to talk to them anymore. That's in the process of being fixed, I gotta tell you. Facebook is gonna make it such that they have enough data on you, enough conversations and messages and stuff, and they can imitate you. Eventually that will become your replacement dead loved one. So here, let's look at the beautiful views and stuff. Meow. Yeah, I'm here to take a couple pictures. Yeah.